Recently, we have seen how to use the ESP32 camera with the FTDI to upload the code because this camera module doesn't come with a USB uh, port. We only have the micro SD card reader that we're going to talk about in our next video. Basically, we can use another method. So you don't have to use the FTDI to upload the code through the USB cable. We can use an actual Arduino like the Arduino Nano or the Arduino Uno. So we are going to connect some of the pins of the Arduino to the ESP32 camera and we can use the USB port to upload the code through it. I'm going to use the breadboard to make the connections. We have some jumper wires that we can use to connect the uh, pins. But first, let's take a look at the pin diagram. Basically, we are going to connect the Arduino. Here we have the VCC that goes to the 5 volt pin and the ground to the ground to power up the ESP32 camera. And to be able to upload the code, we have to connect the RX of the Arduino to the pin that is labeled U0R and the TX pin of the Arduino goes to the U0T and the same thing, to activate the programming mode we have to connect the GPIO pin number 0 to the ground using a jumper wire that's really important to upload the code and to make sure that the Arduino is running and never resets we have to connect the reset pin of the Arduino to the ground using another jumper wire so you can pause the video for me, I have connected all of the pins using the breadboard. Now we are going to connect the USB cable so that we can upload the code to the ESP32 camera. Our ESP32 camera is going to be connected to a network using its SSID, which is the name and the password. If you didn't have a router, you can use the access point of the smartphone. Here we can set the name and the password. So for me, it is called my network. You could also use the access point mode if you want. Then we can use any device like the smartphone that is connected to the same network to get the images or the video from the ESP32 cam. For that, the router is going to assign an IP address to all of the devices like the ESP32 camera. We only have to type in that IP address using a browser to get access to the images. Now we can move on to the Arduino IDE so that we can upload the code. Make sure to select the right camera module. For me, it is called II Thinker, and the port is COM7 of the USB cable. Once you do that, we can upload our sketch. But first, we have to open it up by going to File, Examples. Here we have ESP32 and we have Camera. We have this camera web server sketch. It is using the Wi-Fi capability of the microcontroller. But first, make sure to select the right one that you are using because we have different kind of boards. For me, it is not called ESPI. It is called AI Thinker. And it is this one. So make sure to uncomment the right one for you. We're going to set the SID and the password that we have talked about. This is the SID. It is my network for me. And the password. You don't have to understand all of this code. So we have multiple files and multiple lines of code. It is using the web server and the Wi-Fi capability to stream the video. Once you select the right board, we can hit the upload button. If you get this error, you might need to change the USB cable. Make sure to use a shorter one. For me, I have this one that is 20 centimeters long. That's why I'm going to put it again. The port has changed. It is COM3 for now. And we're going to select the same ESP32 camera module. And now it's going to start uploading. Yeah, we have 100%. If you're asking how we can get the IP address of this microcontroller, you have two options. The first one is to enter the router settings. For me, it is the access point. And get the device that is connected to the network. Under here, you're going to see all of the connected devices. It's not connected yet because we have to remove these cables and power up the ESP32 camera using a battery. Here we have a 3.3 volts battery. Make sure that the current is enough for the camera module. Let's unplug all of these. We don't have to use the Arduino. And we could only connect the ground and the VCC. You could use any kind of wires. For me, I'm using this one. Here we have the 3.3 volts pin. And the GND goes to the ground. 
If you look at the back of the ESP32 camera, you're going to see a red light. That means it is powered up. And if you go to the connected devices, you see that we have this new one, ESP32. This is the IP address that we're going to use. But make sure that the computer is connected to the same network. And yeah, we have this web page that is created by the ESP32 camera. To turn it on, we can use this button, Start Stream. And yep, it is working. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. On top we have some settings that we can set, like the resolution. Also we can change the brightness. To get access to the web server, you don't have to remember the IP address. We can use a service that is called MDNS. And we simply have to type in a name that we can set from the code. Then we can get access to the same web page and get the videos. To do that, we have to get back to the code. And on top, I'm going to include another library. And it is called ESP MDNS. M is lowercase. And DNS is uppercase, dot H. After that, we can go under the setup so that we can initialize it. And instead of using the IP address, we're going to use the name that we can set using mdns.begin. I'm going to use my cam. And finally, we have to use service to enable the service. It takes in three parameters. The first one is HTTP. And we have the TCP word. And finally, the port number 80. These are settings that are related to the service MDNS, which is going to convert the IP address to this name and be able to use it. Now, to re-upload the code, you have to make the connections again. Make sure to connect it all of the pins, like we have done at the beginning of the video. Once you do that, we can upload the code again. After that, we can unplug these and power up the module using the battery. We could also use an adapter. So let's connect the VCC to the 3.3 uh, volts and the GND to the GND. Let's get back to the computer or you can use the smartphone and type in the name that we have used it, which is called MyCam and you have to add dot .local and yep, we're getting the same result. We can get a single image or we can start streaming. We have all of the settings on top, like the saturation or the resolution. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.